Stan Jibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV. Whiskey, one, good, vibrations, at your service to describe an antenna that I put up in Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin, on or around uh, late uh, 2001 early 2002 and 2003. After a long period off the air, I finally caved in and bought a radio one rainy day, one stormy day, down in Minneapolis. I drove all the way from Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin, down to Minneapolis, Minnesota, in heavy downpours to purchase the IC7 26 Pro, is it now? I don't even remember the number of the radio, the brand number of the radio, but it was the ICOM IC7 56 26 Pro, something like that. It sits down in my nerd cave right now, and I don't pay attention to the name on the front. I pay attention to the controls on the front. It's still down there, by the way. Yeah, that's my main radio. And I bought that thing and a, an antenna tuner, a remote antenna tuner, uh, called, I believe, the AH-4. And it was located right here at this point. Well, all right. At that point where the coaxial cable from another room came to the kitchen window. There was the antenna tuner right there. Radials laid out on the wall of the house, outside on the wall of this venerable old brick, brick mansion, the second floor of which was my residence, the first floor being the residence of the landlord. Actually, I think my apartment was nicer than theirs, but they were nice people. They were generous people. And they put up with this. <laughs> this antenna, and there's the radials on the side of the house, each one a quarter of a wave for 40 all the way up through 10 meters. A wire about 50 feet long ran out from the tuner, and that wire was grounded with a big ground rod and a bunch of kind of random radial wires under the ground at the garage to direct lightning uh, electrostatic charges away from the house and the radio. And for a couple of years I used this antenna and got very good results partly because this house was on the top of the highest hill in Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin. There were other reasons, but uh, for example, it seemed to be a relatively low noise QTH in contrast to the one I have now. But this was the antenna and the counterpoise being vertical and the whole is like a sideways vertical with radials sideways ground plane. I call it a lazy counterpoise. But it sure wasn't lazy when it came to causing EMI to electronic equipment in the house. <laughs> As you might well guess, because these radials aren't just idle pieces of wire. These radials are a quarter of a wavelength long for a reason. They radiate away the energy as if it were a ground of sorts and they radiate half of the energy as you can see pretty clearly and imagine pretty clearly from this diagram right into the house. One uh, morning my landlord's uh, wife uh, asked me about strange interference to some of their electronic devices and she asked if it had anything to do with my ham radio and I said well yes it probably does because when I keyed my radio at full power the uh, 
dimmable desk lamp that I had on the other side of the room would get brighter right in sync with my CW. So I could send CQ, 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 this is W1GV, and watch that light blink. And I imagine that if the RF in the house wiring was sufficient to produce that effect, it would be sufficient to produce a lot of others. So at that point, I reduced power greatly to about 3 watts, but did mainly just listening. Although I worked the South Pacific and, and Europe and a number of DX locations with this antenna, which used a lazy counterpoise geometrically, but a very, very active and ambitious counterpoise when it came to causing RFI to other people's stuff. I never used any other stuff but the radio when I was on the radio, so I never noticed. But God forbid somebody might be on a pacemaker in that house or something like that. You've got to be aware of stuff like this. But this antenna is what I used as my first antenna after many, many years off the air living in various locations around the mainland United States and also Kona, Hawaii. Back to the Northland, back near home, back where you'd get so cold in the winter time that your eyeball fluid would freeze if you didn't keep your eyes shut half the time outside in January. Stan Jibalisco saying 73, which means best regards in ham radio jargon, and so long which means, in my native language, da-da-da-da-da-da.